Kingston Nigerian Primary School was founded because of the massive population of out of school children in this environment. When I started it, there was some struggle, some struggle, some struggle, until I went back to pray and I heard clearly my spirit. I did not send you tuition free. Make it 100% free. They should not pay for anything. Every time I pass by, go to drop my children in school or pick them from school, I see two things in this environment. I see many children that did not go to school. The government is trying their best, but the real quality of education that should guarantee a child success in this present age the real price, the average parent cannot afford it. Some of the children you can see that they want to go to school. We, we want to build a secondary school so that from, from KG, from kindergarten, from nursery to secondary school is free. The state of education in rural Nigeria is one of the biggest challenges that education stakeholders have to address urgently. For many years, rural education has meant education characterized with very poor infrastructure with less or no attention. In Nigeria's National Policy on Education 1998, it stated that the federal government has adopted education as an instrument for affecting national development in all areas of the nation. Well. It seems this was said in the absence of proper procedure and process to implement. Taking a critical look at the educational system in the rural areas of Nigeria, the overwhelming widespread of illiteracy is obvious to the undiscerning. Generally, the rural areas in Nigeria are incessantly neglected by the government when it comes to the development of any form, educational development inclusive. It is a well-known fact that Nigeria is predominantly a rural society as the highest number of her population live in rural areas, pinning the aspect that some schools and cities with well-structured buildings, facilities give less than what a proper education entails. Some of the schools in the rural communities do not have blocks, not to talk of classroom foundations. It is as poor as there is no plan of any form for the rural areas. There has been an incessant shortage of academic staff in rural schools for many years in Nigeria. This explains why a teacher can be saddled to teach two or more subjects outside his or her discipline. Learning facilities in rural Nigeria are in very poor conditions, if at all they exist. Computer laboratories, internet and other things that would expose the children to global standard in their studies are absent. This is an underlying factor in Nigeria as a whole. People in rural areas live below a dollar daily. The poverty level is so high for them to afford schooling opportunities for their children. To appreciate God for all the support but right now we need more support we we are asking the government we are asking individuals we are asking um, bodies that are interested in this kind of vision this kind of assignment to please come to our aid the two days ago my the, the director of Kissinger primary school announced to the teacher that in two days time or in a week time our school will be giving a quick notice actually. So as a teacher and as a supporter of this wonderful vision, I felt so bad, like I felt sad. 
and I, to me, I'm being consigned, cons being consigned towards the life of these children. I felt if this actually happened, it really affects the life of these wonderful children. My name is Reverend Dr. Victor Bashola. I'm the senior pastor of All Mark of Success Ministries in Akute, and I'm the founder of Kingston Nazarene Primary School, a 100% tuition-free educational institution in Akute. Kingston Nazarene Primary School was founded because of the massive population of out-of-school children in this environment. Um, every time I pass by, go to drop my children in school or pick them from school, I see two things in this environment. I see many children that did not go to school. Of course, you will know they did not go to school if you see them by 10 a.m., by 9 a.m., the time that other children are supposed to be in school, and you still see them without uniform, hanging around their parents in their shops, or just running some errands that do not befit children. When you see such things, you just know that that child or those set of children did not go to school. That's number one. Number two, you also see children that are chased from school fees, uh, from school because of school fees. When I see children that are chased from school or that are being flogged or that are being disciplined because of school fees, I see a misnomer because under normal circumstances, it is not the children that should be disciplined for not being able to pay the school fees. It is the parents that should be disciplined. It is the parents that should be chased from work because they are not able to pay their school fees. So such kind of situation started brewing compassion in me. And I made up my mind that someday, one day, perchance in the nearest future, I would be able to do something about it as God begins to bless me. Coupled with the fact that when I was also growing up, there were times where they also had to chase us from school because my dad, he tried his best to give us the best of education and he ensured that we went to a school that the average rich people were attending and uh, because of that he was an insurance marketer and the quality of the school did not match with the quality of his income then so there were times where they had to chase us from school. So I understood the emotional trauma of a child not being in school when the mates were in school. So. Mar marrying the situation of what I passed through as a child, marrying it with what I'm seeing in this environment where I'm privileged to pastor, I began to have some thoughts that maybe in the foreseeable future I will be able to start something and maybe give 50% discount to students. Until one day, August last year, August 2021, when we decided to start a school and I had it in mind that we'll give some people discount until I got an inspiration deep down in my spirit, an unmistakable inspiration to start a free school. Out of fear of how the free school will run, I decided to start a tuition free school. Okay, don't pay school fees, but just bring the token for uniform and books. Even at that, the burden was heavy because uniform and books was to buy uniform and books. The teachers must be paid, the rent must be paid, because the rent of the building is 1.5 million naira. When I started it, there was some struggle, some struggle, some struggle, until I went back to pray and I heard clearly in my spirit, I did not send you tuition free. Make it 100% free. They should not pay for anything. It was a lot of struggle, but before I told my wife about it, I had already printed banner, printed flyer, and shared it to everybody because I knew that if I told her a level of faith, a level of belief in the vision will not be able to carry it, she may, out of fear, not support it. So I had already told the whole world and people were already bringing their children before I told her about it. When I did, she fell sick, she fell ill, she was sick, she was hospitalized for no reason. After several tests, we now got to discover that it was the fear of how we were going to survive with that kind of humongous project. That was what made her to fall sick. Hmm. I pleaded with her, convinced her until she had her own conviction and then she supported us. She suddenly got well. I think that was where I discovered that there's something called vision shock, that the size of a vision can make you fall ill, especially when you know the size of the resources compared to the size 
of the vision. You know the woman is the one that runs the home. The woman is the one that knows the budget for the home. So it was obvious that a budget that would take close to one million every month plus salaries, plus um, educational materials, plus logistics of running a school, even for a, a fee-paying school in this environment is a lot of task, not to talk of a, a school that will now be totally free. It's a lot of emotional stress. It saps your energy, it saps your emotion, especially when the month is about to end. Like now, today is 20, 26, right? And the month is about to end. The month will end next week. Salaries, where will it come from? Will the person that supported last month, will the person support again? The person that supported last week, will the person support again? Um, the, the rent has expired. In fact, two days ago, I was given a, a quick notice from the caretaker to the landlord that if we don't pay the balance of the rent, which is 750,000, the rent is 1.5 million, we need to balance 750,000. They said, you know, whether you're running free school or not, you must pay the landlord. You are the one that knows that God said you should do free school. Some people don't even want to believe that God said anything. So they said if we don't bring the balance by month ending, which is on Tuesday, right, we should leave the facility. And if we leave the facility, 12 people will lose their jobs. The security men will lose their jobs. The cook and the assistant will lose their jobs because we give one meal a day. You can perceive smell of food in the atmosphere. We provide one meal a day. We provide free books. We provide free uniforms. We don't collect school fees. We don't charge for anything. And we teach French. We teach Chinese. We teach what we call governance. We teach music. We teach, um, we teach music, French, Chinese, governance and we teach dance, and there's a, there's, a, there's a creative art club, a press club. In fact, the press club, they are doing a debate next two weeks about who they, their choice of the presidential candidates. One will dress like Tinubu, one will dress like Atiku, one will dress like uh, Peter Obi, and they will all debate on their choice. So we are doing a lot that we are supposed to charge serious money for, but because of what I was told, and because of the state of the Nigerian education, the quality of education that a child needs to succeed, the real price, the average Nigerian parent cannot afford it. And in an utopian society, in a society where things are working, education is supposed to be free. In fact, primary education, basic primary education was supposed to be free. The government is trying their best but the real quality of education that should guarantee a child success in this present age, the real price, the average parent cannot afford it. So, shouldering this vision for the time that we have been running now has been a lot of mental task, a lot of emotional body. But one way or the other, before shame and disgrace comes, God always send someone like i believe that before next week tuesday god will also touch someone that will support with the rent god will touch an organization i believe strongly that the right organization that should support this they are just waiting for the right time and i believe that the right time is now we need partners for the books we need partners for the uniforms we need partners for the feeding a, a, a nodu company can support with cartons of nodules a spaghetti company a, a a rice company can support with rice, can support with food stuff. Can, you can say, okay, I take off the salary of 10 teachers. And can I, can I shock you? We are the highest paying school in this environment. The least teacher collects 50,000. <laughs> it's crazy because I believe strongly that apart from the fact that education should be free in an African nation in Nigeria, I also believe that teachers that are the ones that train other persons, Without teacher, they cannot be doctors. Without teacher, they cannot be lawyers. Without teacher, they cannot be teacher. You cannot understand what I'm saying now if you are not properly taught. So I believe that teachers should be among the highest paid people in Nigeria. So teachers, 50,000 is nothing to a teacher. They are transport to work. Someone told me the other day, why will you pay teachers 50,000? You want to spoil them. Spoil them for what? That's what somebody earns per hour in a, in a society that is working. So if a teacher earns 50,000 and NC order earns 50,000 at the end of the month, it is not a sin, it's not a crime. In fact, we should pay them high. I am of the opinion that the least a teacher should earn in Nigeria should be 200,000. Why? Because the teacher is the one doing the major job of raising a child from cradle to whatever level of education that the child will take. 
why I, so, I, I recommend 200,000, whether private, whether public school. And the moment the salary of teachers are jacked up, you will begin to attract the best of minds. The reason why you are attracting riffraffs, in quotes, the reason why you are attracting those that don't have any other thing to do, let me just teach until when I get a good job. That is why you are attracting people that is not, their, not really their passion to teach. But if you want to attract the best of brains to the teaching profession, jack up the salary. The moment you jack up the salary of teachers, you begin to get more qualified hands and more qualified hands will translate to better prepared children. When you begin to attract master degree older to teach early child education, you can imagine the kind of children that we will raise. The reason why you bring out, churn out children, churn out students from schools and they cannot live up to their counterparts in the world is because of the quality of the teachers that are taking care of them. Once we increase their salary, you will get better students. I've written letters to some NGOs, I've written letters to some government agencies, I've written letters to some corporate organizations. In fact, there was one corporate organization that I wrote a letter to. My father worked there for 35 years. They told me that, um, uh, go and start first. They were about to start. I thought maybe because my father worked there for 35 years, they would respond to me. I even wrote that I am a child of this company. I was born when this company started. I know how this company started. They said I should go and start first, that when the thing starts rolling, they will get involved. And I replied the whatever manager, I said, the, the business manager. I said, if you don't support me now that the things at this stage, how will I even get it rolling? I've written to some NGOs. They, 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 see, some people want to see it working before they come in. So when you get this kind of vision, you have to buckle your belt and get it to work. So therefore, my little savings that I had, I closed it down. I used to drive a Jeep. I had to let it go. Why? Right now, when people see me trek, they feel that, oh, hey, hey, yeah, uh, hey, so far I want to kill him. I know what I am doing. If you do not die, your work will die. Hi. If you refuse to sacrifice yourself at the beginning of every dream, nobody will support you. I've written to several organizations. Till date, the only organization that has supported is Clam Foundation, headed by my father in the Lord, Apostle Wale Oladini. I am proud to mention his name. He's the only company or foundation or NGO that has supported. The others are individuals. Why? The humongous cost of running the school. Some persons are afraid to get involved. But it cannot close. A quick notice has been given to us in this facility. But before that quick notice will expire, which is next week, Tuesday, help will come. The reason why we decided to give one free meal a day was because the children are of different demographics. There are some that are very, very, very on the ground. We have students in this school that have not been to school for two years. In fact, we have students that are in basic one or what you call primary one that should have been in primary four. But because of the gap in their education, their parents did not have money to send them to school. There are some house helps in this school. But there's a particular lady that she's a house help. If you see her size, she should be in basic six or she's in basic one because she has been a house help for so long. Now, if, if not for free education, how will a house help go to school? If not for free education, how will, how will a brother and a sister in basic one that have not been to school for two years, how would they go to school? The reason why we give them one free meal a day, there are some parents here, before they will bring breakfast to the children to be around 12 o'clock, there are some children here, by the time they open what they brought to school, you will see shame in the eye of the child compared to what other children brought to school. Because some parents, if you remove the burden of school fees from them, they cannot have money to feed the child well. So you can see some children come to school with variety. And you see some children come to school with what a normal child should not eat. So therefore, I saw that concentration was having issues. Some of the children were not well fed. And if the child is not well fed, the child will be cranky. The child will be unstable. The child will be imbalanced. So I decided to balance it. Instead of some people eating well, some people not eating well, let us give everybody one quality hot meal a day. We started it a few months ago. Initially, there was struggle. Sometimes there will be money. Sometimes there will not be money. The one meal a day takes about 22.5 every day. Every day. Because we have to provide food for both the children and both the 12 staff that we have in this facility. So, when we started the one meal a day, we discovered that the children began to concentrate. In fact, let me, let, me, let, me, let me make you laugh a little. When we had our meet and break on Monday, some children came to school. Why did they come to school? They want to come to school because they will be taught well. Apart from the teaching, they will eat. 
They are guaranteed of that one meal a day by 12 o'clock or by 10 when they are not fasting. Right now, we, we need a facility of our own because paying rent of 1.5 million every year is an uphill task. We need a land within Akuti because I am, I am sent to this land of Akuti. We need a land within Akuti to build a nursery, primary and secondary school because I'm afraid by the time these children in basic four, they'll be promoted to basic five by September. By the time they get to basic six, and they get to GS1. I'm afraid that the children, the parents that could not even pay for primary education, I'm afraid that they may not be able to afford secondary education. So instead of allowing these children to get to basic six and then go and get married, get to basic six and then start hawking, get to basic six and then go and learn some things that they, they, they because some of the children you can see that they want to go to school. We, we want to build a secondary school so that from, from KG from kindergarten, from nursery to secondary school is free. When that happens, it will have a lot of impact in the life of these children. It will have a lot of impact in the life of the parents. It will take a lot of burden away from the life of the parents and the little money that they make from their tailoring, from their carpentry, from their vulcanizing business, they will be able to channel it in making sure that the children have a comfortable house to stay. Our challenges, we need land, we need a building, we need buses. Some of the children come from far. You will not even believe that there are some children that sometimes do not come to school because their parents could not transport them to school. There's a lot of problem that needs to be solved. So we need land, we need facility, we need support for the rent, we need support for the school fee, uh, support for the teacher salaries, we need support for the meal, we need food stops, we need textbooks, we need uniforms, we need all forms of support that a regular school will need. And above all, we need transportation system like a bus. Forget a bus that can be bringing some that stay far to school, that would just be perfect. Whatever way, how big you can support, how small you can support, nothing is too big and nothing is too little. Thank you. Initially, when we started the vision, because of this kind of environment, you know, some people will suspect you. Why do you want to start a free school? What are you trying to do? Do you want to use the destiny of our children? Well, I, I just had to turn deaf ears to that kind of talk because I know there are some people you have to, when you want to help them, you have to convince them to be helped and force them to be helped. I know what God told me. So when we started, we had to tell them this is what we want to do. Some of the community leaders already know us because every February 14, we do a widow's party. We gather close to 500 widows every year. February 14, we gather the uh, Agberos in town. We give them something every year. So they already know our church, All Mark of Success Ministries, for humanitarian activities. So when we say we were to start a free school, it was received, though, with some forms of um, doubt. And then when we started, one of the things that God helped us to do that changed the game was when that one of the things God helps us to help one of the things God helped us to do that changed the narrative was when I removed my children from a school where I was paying serious money and brought them to the school. By the time some people in the community saw that, oh, his own children are even attending the school, that means whatever he wants to do is genuine, whatever he wants to do is quality. When they saw that my own children attend the school, that was what opened up the hearts of people to believe in the dream of having free education in Akuti.